Hi, welcome to Astro Babble. I'm Donna from Donna B Astrology. And I'm Linda from Scullywag Astrology. And today we are going to be talking about the year ahead transits for Gemini. So this is all of the planetary movements, um, the big ones, the major ones for uh, the, the rising side of Gemini. If you if you we ask you to look to listen to your rising sign, um, we did it. Linda and I did a video about that on um, why it's best to to read your your rising sign. Mm -hmm. And I'll put a link to that in the description. First, we're going to be talking about Mercury. It is the closest planet to the sun. It is the fastest. For 2024, it's going to squeak out four retrogrades because it's going to end its retrograde period actually on January 1st. Our Mercury is known for communications. It has a lot to do with commerce and finances. It has a lot to do with early learning and language. So that's the kind of things that Mercury kind of rules. And it is going to go into retrograde December 13th in 2023 in Capricorn. And then it's um, January 1st. It's going to station direct and it'll be in Sagittarius in your eighth and seventh house. It'll be in your eighth and retrograde back to the seventh. That'll be the house of Sagittarius. So that'll be the first retrograde that it's going to kind of do for this year. And even though it is stationing direct, which is the end of the retrograde phase on January 1st, there is a thing called the retrograde shadow period. So it will be another couple of weeks after that, that you may still feel the effects of that retrograde. When we did that Mercury retrograde, well, we did a Mercury retrograde video and we do have a description of the retrograde shadow period. So even though Mercury retrogrades for three weeks, by the time you add in the retrograde shadow period, it's closer to five or six weeks that you tend to feel the effects if it's striking your chart quite uh, strongly. If you've got planets at the degrees that they're retrograding on, and particularly if you have Mercury as the lord of your annual perfection that year. And we have a retrograde from the 1st of April to the 25th of April. 2024 in Aries which is your 11th house so there will be delays mix-ups miscommunications misunderstandings to do with friends groups and organizations also maybe your hopes and dreams so yeah miscommunications with friends or in group settings it can also be sometimes you hear from old friends you mightn't have seen them for a while I remember I was out with a friend during a Mercury retrograde uh, period and he kept running into people from, um, well, it was an AA group actually. <laughs> I'm thinking, should I mention that? But it's not me that was in it. <laughs> anyway, it was funny. He kept saying, you know, oh, I know them from AA. You know, he hadn't seen them for ages. And um, this was like three or four different occurrences. And then I thought about it. It's like, oh, yeah, it's happening in his 11th. So that can happen. But, yeah, it could be somebody, you cool. know, from groups, or it could be, you know, just literally old friends. Cool. And then the next retrograde is going to happen on August 4th. It's going to station in Virgo, and it's going to um, go direct in on August 28th in Leo. So this is going to be affecting your fourth and third houses. This is the house of your community. And then as well as um, your house of lineage. So, yeah, it's going to station retrograde in your fourth house. So you might hear from long lost relatives or there might be things to do with the house or with your parents that, you know, need addressing. Maybe miscommunications with a family member there or matters to do with where you live or the living situation. And uh, then it's going to go back into your third house because it's going backwards. And third house is, you know, siblings, communication. So it's also transportation. So particularly for you in the latter half of um, August, things like your car breaking down, tires, you know, getting flats or all the rest of it. It's something that can happen to anybody during a Mercury retrograde. But since it's in your third house, it's more likely to happen to you on this occasion and being rerouted and stuff like that yeah um the next re retrograde is going to happen november 25th 
And then it's going to station direct on December 15th in Sagittarius. And that is the house like it like we started at the beginning of the of this year. This is the house, you know, the seventh house is the house of um the other. So you're gonna have maybe people from your past of like a significant other or a you know a past hairdresser that you meet at a store. You know, it could be anything like that. But you will be readdressing. Yeah. And if you get through the whole Mercury retrograde and you don't hear from any ex-lovers or ex-partners. Just remember, sometimes they turn up during the Mercury shadow period because I had that happen one year, a couple of years back. It was um, the retrograde shadow period finished on, I think, the 26th of December. And, yeah, I heard from an ex-boyfriend on the 25th that night. <laughs> I thought I got through. I didn't have any drama. No ex-boyfriends turning up. And then it's like, God. Well, there you go. Thank you, astrology. <laughs> You're in the clear. Yeah. But but the shadow period is a is a thing. It really is a thing. Yeah. Yeah. Even leading up to it. Yes, yes. Because it's um the shadow period's just when it first passes the point where it's going to retrograde back to, that's when it starts. And the retrograde shadow period doesn't finish until the planet gets back to where it was when it first stationed retrograde, when it first decided to appear, because it's not really going backwards. It just appears from our perspective on Earth to be going backwards. But when it gets back to where it first uh, decided to go backwards, that's when its shadow period finishes. And if that's hitting particularly, you know, something significant in your chart, you're probably more likely to hear from exes. So have fun. Just remember, they're exes for a reason. <laughs> and then the next planet we're going to be talking about in all of her ingresses is going to be Venus for the year of 2024. She's going to be moving into Capricorn on January 23rd, and that's going to be in your eighth house. And she is one of the benefics of the two. There's Venus and Jupiter. And you probably could expect to see um, some kind of benefit in other people's in other people's money maybe a will uh is you you're getting money from a will or your partner might might have gotten a raise these are different ways that you could get money from other people mm. because venus does tend to bring like you know some sort of fortunate things you know sometimes gifts yeah. or you know just uh yeah. lights things up mm. she's not going to retrograde at all this year so Thankfully. Yay! <laughs> we can do our beautification <laughs> projects without without worry. Yeah, Venus only retrogrades about every 18 months. Ingress just means enters into a new sign. Ingress is going into. So on February 16th, Venus enters Aquarius in your ninth house. So the ninth house is foreign countries, foreigners. It's those with different religions and beliefs and different cultures. It's higher education, the law, publishing, and esoteric subjects like tarot and astrology. So for some, this might be you become romantically involved with somebody from a different country or a different culture. It could be that you are, you know, very interested uh, or find joy and beauty in, you know, different cultures or beliefs or philosophies. You may, um, yeah, just be attracted to those sorts of things, or you may benefit in some way through that sort of thing. And then on March 11th, um, Venus is going to move into your 10th house of Pisces. And, and that's the house of what you're known for. As a benefic, this is, you should be able to find some kind of, of of good things happening with this. Now, Venus is exalted in Pisces, so that's even better. She, she's going to be acting a little bit more benefic. In the 10th house is the house of your career. So you might get a, a job promotion. You might get acknowledged for a, a job well done as well. So this is what you're known for. Might not be necessarily for your career, but it'll be what you're known for. And that's where you can expect Venus to show up. Mm -hmm. And from April 4th, 
Venus moves into Aries in your 11th house. Venus doesn't do that well in Aries. It's said to be in detriment in this sign because it's ruled by Mars. The 11th house is your friends of groups, friends and organizations. So, you know, you may have something romantic going on with someone you met through a group or through friends, or it could be just more socializing with friends because Venus is also socializing and harmony and beauty and art. It may be just a really enjoyable time. And the groups that can be a social group, it can be a business group, because this is also associated with networking. It's a house that's rising up to the 10th, that career and public reputation. So these are people that can help you. So having a benefic in there, wonderful. Uh, this could even be someone who kind of is like maybe a bit of a mentor or able to assist you in some way. And then on April 29th, Venus is going to move into Taurus, you're at the 12th house. Although the 12th house is hidden, Taurus is her natural sign. So she is going to have all of her tools and be able to accomplish what she wants to do. And the 12th house has something to do with um, hidden things. So it could be, you know, going away and, you know, working on a book or working on a painting that's, you know, you're wanting to be secluded or or doing some inner work which is you know also hidden or going away on just a retreat if you are wanting to go on a retreat like they have i think they have marriage retreats where you where you just go away for and this would be a beautiful venusian activity to do for if you were a gemini for this time period that would be brilliant for that yeah and from May 23rd, Venus moves into Gemini in your first house, which is all about you. It's your health and your vitality, but it's also your appearance. It's how people see you. So this is kind of a bit of a glow up for you. It's a time where you may look more attractive, you know, great time to buy clothing for your wardrobe, kind of get your hair done, you know, maybe a bit of a makeover if that's what you're looking to do. Yeah, just a really nice time. And if none of that is applicable or even in conjunction with, you know, people are likely to find you more harmonious, you know, more charming because Venus is charming. It's beauty and it's art and it's wanting things to be just really nice and pleasant. Venus is all about what brings us joy. And in your first house, it's all about you and you bringing joy. So very nice. Very nice. And then she'll be moving into Cancer, which is your second house on June 17th. And the second house is the house of your finances, what supports you, what you use, what the things that you value. So this is, you You might get a benefit, you might get a raise at work, you might get um, just uh, money for, you might win money. I mean, it, it's it's very possible. This has a lot to do with your finances and what and the things that you need to survive. So in your second house of cancer, it it's a uh, it, it it might be very emotional. I mean, it might be an emotional kind of a happiness. So, yeah, it's a, it's a, it you know anytime Venus shows up, it's a it's a great house, and especially when in a second house, that's your finances. So, you can expect to get good things if they are hitting your chart correctly. Nice. You got planets and other other sources that. Uh, would would support that mm -hmm. and from july 11th venus moves into leo in your third house this is the house of siblings neighbors and your local neighborhood it's just you know what's familiar to us what we kind of run into every day so this is nice venus in that house just kind of means you know, just day-to-day -day life is easier, more enjoyable. It's friendlier. It's lighter. Relationships with siblings should be quite good at this time. And uh, not just siblings. This also includes extended family like aunts and uncles or cousins. But yeah, nice time. Just generally nice time. And, you know, if you are looking to do something artistic, you know, maybe within the neighborhood or something like over here, you get like, um, I suppose they're power boxes or something, you know, this would be a great time. Like people can put in applications to paint them. Like my son wants to paint one. 
so that would be a great time mind you he's a he's a pisces uh ascendant i shall have to go and look and see when it's in his third house <laughs> but like you know yeah. that would be a great use of it you know doing something within the neighborhood to beautify the neighborhood and then on august 4th um venus is going to move into virgo and that's the fourth house this is the fourth house of your home it's also the the house of your um your your lineage it could be your parents house as well and you can expect to get um some kind of benefit whether it's a beautifying project around your home or you know something good and social event around your parents i mean it's a lots of lots of good benefic things that will happen uh come for you in on august 4th with when Vir when virgo when venus goes into virgo mm -hmm. it is her detriment i mean she's she's not her detriment she's in her fall there but uh it is a it is a relatively nice house and a lot of good things can happen in the fourth house yeah i mean she's still venus she's still a benefic she just might not be as uh, charming as she could be <laughs> I shouldn't say that. She just might not be as benefic as she would be in, say, Taurus or Libra, where she rules. Uh, from August 29th, Venus moves into Libra, who, which is a sign that she rules. So she's got all that she needs in this house. And, and lucky you, it's in the fifth house, which is the fun house. This is a house where Venus is naturally in her joy. So Venus loves being in the fifth house and she's in Libra in your chart. So great fifth house uh gemini risings fun time this is great great time with kids this is a great time with creativity art this is great time for socializing romance and as you might notice a lot of these topics of the fifth house which is children creativity socializing having fun romance they're all venusian type topics so you can see why venus is very happy here so great time from August 29th to September 22nd. What's that? Just over three weeks. So really nice time. For Gemini, sure. Um, yes. And then September 22nd, <laughs> she, Venus takes a wrong turn and goes into <laughs> Scorpio. Um, this is a sign where she it does not, she's not happy here at all. She doesn't have any of her tools. She's, she's in detriment here. Hmm. And uh, this is the sixth house. But you can still expect that there might be um, some goodness coming from from this. It's Venus, you know, is a benefic in your sixth house. She might, you might end up getting a pet because this is the house of pets. This is also the house of illness. So hopefully, maybe uh, if you are have been, if you have an, an illness, maybe you might make a a, a better turn on that illness uh, come September 22nd. This is also the house of service or what you do daily. So Venus is asking you to do something um, or or able to, to benefit you when you are uh, doing something of service or something that daily in there. So you might get a benefit. Even though it's not one of the nicest house houses, it, it, Venus is still a benefit. So I think you will still feel that. Yeah, I think so too. From October 17th, Venus will be in Sagittarius. And this is your seventh house. The seventh house is our closest one-on-one -on -one relationships. So this is partners, whether that's romantic or business partners. It can include clients. If your work includes working one-on-one -on -one with clients, then they may be covered under this house as well. And it's also our very close friends. So Venus in here, just a really nice time, harmonious, easygoing, friendly. And I mean, Sagittarius is an upbeat, positive sign. So nice time with your closest one-on-one -on -one relationships from October 17th to November 11th. Mm -hmm. um, and then she's going to move into... Capricorn into your eighth house on November 11th and this is the house where um you know you could get some benefit from either your spouse's income or or maybe a will or 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 money from other people from for some, this is the house of other people's money so somehow there could be a benefit there could also be a benefit gosh uh hopefully less worry hopefully that, that is also the house of worry 
Oh, but it's yes. also the house of worry. Mm. Yeah, so. anxiety and worry. Yeah, it can be very much. Yeah, that. So. yeah. So mm. maybe maybe a little bit of of lightness uh, she can bring to that house. That would be nice. It'll be in. It'll it'll be the Capricorn. So it's it's not like she's in detriment in that sign. So yes, I would think a benefit could happen. Mm -hmm. And from December seventh, Venus moves into Aquarius in your ninth house. The ninth house is foreigners and foreign places. It's higher education, publishing, the law. It's also esoteric subjects, beliefs, culture, philosophy. It's things that aren't familiar to you, like the third house. We were talking about our local neighborhood, our siblings. These are things that are very familiar to us. They're usually very closely bound up with us growing up. This is the opposite house. This is about the big wide world out there so yeah you know you could be falling in love with somebody who's from a different culture or different country it could be you know you're doing something at um, university or college you know maybe you fall in love with somebody there or maybe you're doing something and really enjoying it and, and getting some benefit maybe you've been struggling with your studies and now it comes good it could be if you have a lawsuit, maybe, you know, if it comes to, what's the word? If a judgment is handed down at this time, it may be more positive because you have Venus there at the time. I can't say for certain because, I mean, who knows what else might be in there at the time or what might be opposing it. But generally speaking, when Venus is in the house, she brings positive things. So you can expect positive things from you know having venus in the ninth house so you can expect positive things from those topics but without looking nice. at the natal chart itself and what it exactly else is going on at the time you know so like if you have a lawsuit you can't be absolutely sure this is a very general reading and then the next planet we're going to be talking about is opposite Venus. This is Mars. Um, Mars is one of the malefic planets. There are two. And um, Mars will be retrograding this year as well. So we're going to start off. Mars is, has a lot to do with fighting, aggression, uh, bleeding, separation, as well as courage drive ambition courage leadership yeah 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 mm, courage mm. and the leadership types type, 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 type qualities when and the drive that we have you know to to get things done that's what mars provides so um january 4th mars will be moving into your capricorn house now mars is the fourth planet out so it goes a little bit slower than venus and and mercury so he is not going to hit all of the signs and um he is going to be on January 4th, moving into Capricorn, your eighth house. And the eighth house, you know, is the house of, of other people's money. It could be the house of your spouse's or significant other's money. Um, this could end up with a little bit of separation or, or aggression with other people's money. So if you're a Gemini rising, this would be a house to be you know, just keep it a little bit in check because this is where you're going to feel that that aggression, anger, drive, or leadership quality skills. Yeah, January fourth I mean, from. Yeah, that could be something like you know you're inherited something, uh, but the will's contested or anything like that. Yes. Or it could be you know there's um, splitting of finances or financial togetherness you know through a divorce or something yeah uh from february 13th mars will move into aquarius in your ninth house the ninth house is higher education foreigners foreign places beliefs other cultures religion philosophy esoteric subjects so you may be putting a lot of drive and energy into one of those topics. You may also be um, more likely to be a little bit more aggressive regarding those matters at that time, or you may be experiencing aggression regarding those topics. This is also the house of publishing and lawsuits or the law. So this could be that you're undergoing a lawsuit at this time. And, you know, there's a lot of 
aggression involved with that. It could be something as simple as your worldview, maybe how you see um, a political subject, somebody else takes big offense to that. And, you know, you might just have to agree to disagree. You know, Aquarius is a fixed sign. So you may have a lot of strong feelings about that, being that it's your ninth house. But, you know, these, it doesn't move super quick, but it will move. So, <laughs> and it doesn't mean that the whole period will be like that. It's more likely to uh, happen if you have planets in the fixed signs. So it's Aquarius, Leo, Taurus, and Scorpio if they're being kind of triggered as Mars moves through that house. Very nice. And then on March 22nd, Mars will be moving into the 10th house of Pisces. And this is the house of what you're known for. This is, you know, so you could, you could end up um, either separating from a job or gaining leadership from, from a job. We, this is astrology. We do have the choice of free will if we know these energies are coming towards us. So, you know, don't discount a, a malefic planet being in a sign. We do have free choices and, and they do have good sides to them. Um, but in the 10th house is what you're known for. So you could experience aggression at work. You could experience a separation. You could as well experience it's, you know, being known for, you know, as far as Mars is concerned, you could experience like fighting, um, a, a, you know, known for being in a, in, involved in a huge fight. So, you know, you want to be watchful of this particular Mars going into that house. So watch around this time. Just try to be more on the chill side as of March 22nd. Just put it in your calendar to, you know, really watch your temper. Because mm -hmm. this is what you're going to be known for. Mm. Yeah. And I mean, in Pisces, that's an emotionally driven Mars. So, yeah. And from uh, April 30th, Mars moves into Aries, which is a sign it rules. So it's a strong position for Mars and it's in your 11th house. The 11th house is groups, friends and organizations. So you may want to watch more likely to be temper tantrums or maybe a fight at this time with groups or friends but look you know mars is also just pure energy you know this is a great time to be active within groups or with friends if you feel tension building up you know if you can take it out in a squash court or a netball court or a i don't know why i put netball up that's a very bizarre one <laughs> do you know what netball is i'm guessing tennis or ping pong no, it's a big kind of ball thing. It's kind of volleyball. Like, yeah, but it's kind of got nets. It's weird. Um, okay. <laughs> it's kind of like weird basketball. Oh, okay. <laughs> but um, yeah, you know, tennis or squash or, you know, whatever, you know, hiking. Yeah, it's a good time to be active. Or, you know, you could use that drive to maybe try and become uh, some sort of leadership position within a group perhaps so hmm. and I mean it isn't oh, Aries like so you know this is maybe it requires you to show courage and because in Aries it's ruled by Mars it's a good position for it so it should be able to hopefully exhibit its more positive energies it would be a good time to join a uh, like a softball league or a volleyball yes. league yes using that Mars in that house and then on june 8th mars will be moving into taurus in the 12th house and the taurus is the house where mars does not feel comfortable uh this is the house that is usually ruled by venus and mars has doesn't really want much to do with venus um and this is the house of of seclusion and uh, away and separation. This is exactly what Mars is Mars is, is 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 looking to do, is to separate. So, this could also be, um, you know, self undoing. You know, and when you have Mars in the twelfth house, this is this is un self undoing. This is the house of, you know, if you got angry, this could you know be the beginning of you know a lot of trouble for you if you don't control it so you definitely want to you want to watch your your temper your aggression in taurus mars isn't going to be acting 
as spiff, as spiffy as he would as he should. Um, so he's not going to have the tools that he normally uses. So he might be a little bit more erratic than in the other houses. But in the twelfth house, this is a this is definitely a house of undoing. So you know you could you know watch out for accidents as well. This is a yeah. This is a house of of your own self undoing. So you have yeah. control. <laughs> Yeah, and I mean, like in Taurus, you know, because it's a sign ruled by Venus, it may um, manifest more as rather than outright aggression, maybe passive aggression. So, and that could be rather a bit of a downfall too. Twelfth house is also the house of hidden enemies. So, mm. yeah, just um, just be aware. From July twentieth. Mars moves into Gemini in your first house, the house of your health and vitality. So this might be a big boost in your energy levels because when Mars is in the 12th house, it can kind of deplete you a little bit too. Um, so yeah, you should be kind of raring to go, quite um, amped up. You may want to watch so that you are not more aggressive than you realize, because this is how people perceive you, you know, because it is a house of your health and vitality, you may want to watch out for accidents here as well. Good advice. And then on September 4th, Mars will be moving into Cancer and Cancer is your second house. And like I said, Mars is in charge of separation. And I just, I just went through a, <laughs> a retrograde in my second house with, with Mars. So, um, this could be this could be money leaving you very 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 fast and very quickly and a lot of it so you know the kid the second house is the house of 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 your money your finances what you use to um to survive and the things that you value so this might be uh aggression or drive to to build up that that cash stash that you're working on it it could be it could do that it could also um you know, in, in cancer, this house is, you know, so you're going to do that emotional spending, watch out for that because you don't want to do, you really want to have, you know, well thought out, especially, you know, in these times, you know, the finances, you kind of want to, you don't want to overspend. You don't want to, you don't want to have more money leave you than you intended. So be yeah. careful of that. And from the 3rd of November, Mars is going to be in Leo in your third house. This is the house of siblings, neighbors in our local neighborhood. It's also transportation and uh, early education, short courses. You may want to watch that you not kind of sparring with siblings or cousins or other close relatives. Uh, great time to be active with them. Uh, we are going to have Mars retrograde in this house from the 6th of December to February 2025. It is going to go back into your second house. So that's going to be fun. But yeah, it's going to spend more time than usual in this third house. Uh, and it's, you know, going into 2025, it's got to come back into that house. So yeah, there could be issues that arise with cousins, siblings, or neighbors or to do with the local neighborhood, maybe they, something happens and then Mars will go retrograde and uh, might need a review. And uh, when it comes back over it again, that any significant event that happened regarding those topics may come up for examination again. Very nice. And, and so Mars is going to be, you're going to experiencing that shadow period when Mars mm -hmm. is in the Cancer Leo houses. So that's the second and third houses. And that's going to go from October 5th to May 2nd of 2025. So that's a, that's a good, it's a good period where you could be feeling that retrograde type yeah. of Mars energy. But thankfully Mars only retrogrades every two years. But yeah, for our Gemini ascendants, it's going to be issues to do with third house, siblings, local neighborhood, neighbors, and second house finances, your personal finances and uh, income. Definitely something to watch for and you want to keep Mars as positive as possible. Speaking mm -hmm. of positive, our next planet, we're talking about Jupiter. Jupiter is the, is the second benefic 
it's he's actually the greater benefic. He's the big planet. When you when you walk outside and you see a big star, that's probably Jupiter. Venus is quite bright too. She's also I think she's brighter than Jupiter, but yeah. I, I see I see I see I don't know. I don't know if it's because I'm a day chart, but I seem to see Jupiter a lot more than I see <laughs> Venus. I don't know why. But anyway, uh-huh. Jupiter is going to have a Uranus conjunction at 21 degrees of Taurus, 49 minutes on April 20th. And this is going to be in your 12th house. And this is this is when you're going to have when I talk when I think about Jupiter, I think about big and expansive and broad-minded. So and then I when I think about Uranus, I think about shocking, revolutionary, and freedom. So you could have any of those types of things going on in your 12th house. And this is going to happen, yeah, as I said, April 20th, 2024. This is going to be right after an eclipse. So mm. I think that there's going to be a lot of energy around this time and i expect that with jupiter and uranus conjuncting together i think that it's going to be quite large and quite quite big and expansive and shocking it's just big and explosive because uranus is that that shocking Mm -hmm. the fact that it's in your 12th house is a little bit concerning because it is a house of your undoing jupiter it is a benefic, but it does like to go big. And that Uranus, even though it can bring freedom, it can be, it can make you very uncomfortable before you get that freedom. So there might be a big push, something that maybe you need to be free of, maybe something that's um, a bad habit, self-defeating habit, uh, an addiction, something you need to be free of may be kind of, shoved at that time in a a very large way I just in the 12th house it'll be very interesting when it happens and we start hearing stories about how different people have experienced it yeah and and not everybody may experience it because you may need to have planets around about 21 Taurus or the other fixed signs so Taurus Scorpio Aquarius or Leo not everybody may experience it so dramatically And then Jupiter is going to enter Gemini on May 25th. And this is going to be in your first house because Jupiter is almost like way out there. So it's like one, two, three, four, five. It's the fifth planet out. And it usually stays in a sign for 12, you know, for like a year. But this is going to end up going into, this is going to end up going into Gemini on may 25th and so this is going to be quite a shift when this happens um going when it goes into your first house you should be able to expect you know being a benefic planet this is going to bring you good things to yourself linda mentions earlier (laughs) uh you know watch out for weight gain because this jupiter in your first house could bring you you know put on weight or um, other things that might not be as desirable and some things are desirable that you are getting in your in your first house when, with Jupiter there yeah so this is it's definitely something to watch and there will definitely be a shift because you're going to go from the 12th house of house undoing to the house of of me and 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 benefits so you'll feel that you know that Jupiter uh, niceness more on on you after uh, May 25th. And you may see more like the life of the party. I always think of like Jupiter, almost like a Santa Claus type figure, you know, big and jovial yeah. and yeah, yeah, very um, larger than life character. So you may be more, what's the word, charismatic <laughs> when uh, Jupiter moves into your first house. We do have Jupiter retrograding from the 9th of October to the 4th of February, 2025. It's going to retrograde in that first house. So that will be interesting. Maybe some things to do with generosity, uh, philosophy, wisdom, luck, optimism may be undergoing some review, maybe you know, you have been this big benevolent character and, you know, you've been feeling generous and optimistic, but maybe perhaps somebody's taken advantage of this and, you know, maybe that has you reviewing like, oh, okay, maybe I need to still be like that, but maybe not as 
open, maybe there's, for whatever reason, a need to review. And you may kind of, you know, for everybody, when Jupiter retrogrades, it can feel like, you know, we're not as lucky, not as optimistic. It's not it's something you may have been enthusiastic about. And so this could be something to do with your health or vitality or it could be with how others perceive you. So you may kind of come to some sort of realization that what you want to achieve may take longer. Maybe you're not getting the assistance that you were counting on. But look, you know, this happens every year, Jupiter retrogrades, we can get very enthusiastic and um, really upbeat about certain things. And then sometimes it's like reality hits and it's more likely to hit during this retrograde period, which is the 9th of October to the 4th of February, 2025. And again, it's more likely to matter more to you if you have planets around about 21 or 11, well, between those uh, degrees of the mutable signs. So Gemini, Sagittarius, Pisces, or Virgo. This would also be a, um, like if you were in, in school, and you decided um, instead of being a lawyer, you want to be a, a writer. You might want to change. I mean, because this is your higher education. This is the natural ruler of the higher education. So, you know, a change of, of what your your long plans are would be also very indicative of a retrograde Jupiter. Mm -hmm. And then good old Saturn. He's my buddy. We get on really well because I'm a night chart and Saturn loves night chart people. And I'm being a little bit silly here because, yes, Saturn's more difficult usually for those born at night. But Saturn's going to remain in Pisces during 2024. It will remain in your 10th house. So this is good. 10th house is career and public reputation. So this is a really good opportunity during this year to build that career, to work hard, to be persistent, to just keep going because that's what Saturn's really good at. It's really good at just keeping going. You know, you will face restrictions and limitations because that's the nature of Saturn. Wherever it is, it's going to do that. But expressed positively, it's about building something that will stand the test of time. And in your 10th house of career, hopefully you're building something career-wise, or it could be something that will bring you reward or honors later down the track or it may be something that you're just known for generally very nice i like i like well i like saturn in the 10th <laughs> house it is very speaks of of hard work and mm. and that dedication anyway um saturn will retrograde in pisces and it's going to stay in pisces this year it's not moving out of pisces this year or might be at the end of next year but it's going to be in pisces for a very long time this is not a sign where um Saturn had uh, for the last two years or last five years uh, been in its own sign. So it does not have rulership in, in Pisces. It's, it's, a, it's a more emotional, watery uh, Saturn than normal. So that it might be acting a little bit different than it has in the last five years. But it's going to station retrograde in Pisces at 19 degrees, 25 minutes on June 29th. And it's going to station direct at 12 degrees, 24 minutes on November 15th. So it, and it's all going to be in the 10th house. So, you know, that's where all the revisiting things that you will do at, at a at a retrograde for, for Saturn is, is, uh, will be retrograding there. And, and you might re be revisiting like, well, maybe I wanted to do something in my, in my workplace and I want to redo that, or I want to do a, a, a re something in, as far as work is concerned, this would be maybe the time to do that. Mm. And maybe, you know, during that retrograde period, you might feel the limitations or any restrictions you come across stronger at that time or they may seem a little bit more insurmountable so just keep going you know that's what Saturn wants it's, you know nose to the grindstone you have Saturn in the 10th don't you I do have Saturn in the 10th so I do know that nose to the grindstone shoulder to the wheel mm -hmm. yep <laughs> just keep going <laughs> yes yeah keep plugging along Oh, 
and not to be outdone, Pluto in the sky <laughs> has been doing a dance between two signs. And Pluto is the farthest planet out. So it's the it's it takes the longest to go around the sun. It takes over 240 years to go around the sun. So it is a long orbit. Um, we won't ever have a chance to see it return to where it was when we were born, unless modern science helps us live over to 240 years old. <laughs> so this is a um Pluto, but but when Pluto is is going through a house, it's asking you to get rid of something and make room for other things. Pluto is the planet of transformation, burning like a phoenix in the, into the fire until there's nothing left of, of you but you know, basically the phoenix part of you um that can rise above those flames or you know, getting rid of what's no longer serving you and you know, making room for what will be coming into your life. So there, there is the good, that good aspect of Pluto. Pluto also makes small things very big or big things very small. So he does that, uh, um, almost that kind of opposite, you know, uh, kind of energy to make you look at like, what could it be? You know, it's that transformational type of, if you can at least say dream about it, uh, you know, Pluto is, is asking for that that change that everybody needs to go through because we all need to keep moving along. Uh, it's Pluto is, will be re-entering Aquarius on January 20th, 2024, and um, was briefly in Aquarius in the ninth house from March 23rd to June 11th of 2023 before going back into Capricorn. So it's, it's, it's kind of doing that back and forth between that, you know, between those houses. And so Pluto will re-enter Capricorn on the 1st of September 2024 for the final time. It will be there until the 19th of November. This is its very last foray in Capricorn. It, will, it won't be back for another 240 something years after this. So Capricorn is your eighth house. So Pluto has been there since 2008 for most of that time up until now. It did duck into Aquarius briefly in 2023 from March to June but this is kind of tidying up matters to do with your eighth house so that's shared finances that's other people's money that's things like inheritances debts loans taxes insurance and you know financial agreements and your partner's money so there may have been matters to do with that, particularly if you have planets very late in the degrees of Capricorn or even the other cardinal signs. So that would be Cancer, Libra or Aries as well. But yes, it's going to finally leave on 19th of November, 2024. Very much to look out for. <laughs> as a Capricorn ascendant, I can't wait. Yes. Yeah. As a, as, and it's a, it's the smallest planet, but it seems to have a lot of impact. So mm, mm, yeah. It's capabilities should not be underestimated. Mm -hmm. From the 19th of November, 2024, it's in Aquarius for a very long time. It will be in there until March, 2043, when it will duck into Pisces very briefly in your 10th house but it will move back into uh, Aquarius and um, it won't leave it finally until the 19th of January, 2044. So we've got a good 20 years of Pluto in Aquarius in your ninth house. And as Donna was saying, it can make big things small, small things big. One way that can express itself is kind of an obsession. So for some people, this may actually manifest as like a huge deep obsessive thing to do with ninth house topics which is kind of you know could be interesting that includes esoteric subjects like astrology and tarot but it's also the law and publishing it's foreigners it's foreign countries it's religion beliefs other cultures so for some people it may be kind of like you know, maybe a beautiful obsession with one of those topics or maybe not such a beautiful obsession, <laughs> maybe just a, a plain old obsession. But yeah, um, but it may transform your life in some way. You will hopefully have a beautiful, some, you know, obsession, <laughs> obsession. <laughs>
And then the eclipses um, will be happening. We're going to have our first lunar eclipse on March 25th, 2024 at five degrees Libra, seven minutes. In, and this will be happening in your fifth house. And eclipses are known for bringing things into your life or, or taking things out of your life. And Linda and I did a, a video on eclipses, and hopefully she will tag it I in, will. Uh, in the information here. Uh, this is a, this is a lunar eclipse and, uh, it, it should be, you should feel it more internally. This is going to be happening in your fifth house of creativity or your children. So things might be coming in and out of your life are surrounding your children or things that you create. Mm -hmm. Um, the next eclipse is going to be the solar eclipse on April 8th, 2024 at 19 degrees Aries, 24 minutes. And that will be happening in your 11th house. This is going to be a total eclipse. And this is going to be the second leg of <clears throat> the first leg that we just experienced. Uh, October 14th was one one of the legs of the X that's going to be on the United States. This is going to be this the second one that's going to complete that cross that's going to, that, that centers around San Antonio, Texas. So this is definitely one to watch if you live in the United States. Most definitely. Yes. And these ones are eclipses that we read it out of our eclipse Bible is by Bernadette Brady, the Eagle and the Lark. Do you have, do you have the book handy? I do actually. Eclipses come in what we call Saros series. They're like a family. And uh, every 18 years, you have an eclipse from the same Saros series or Saros um, cycle. So this 8th of April one is Saros series 8 North. So you may have something from 18 years ago. So that would be 2006 or prior to that, 1988 or prior to that 1970, there may be a linking or some sort of continuation of themes from those dates. It does say regarding this, it is an inventive and flashes of genius are the hallmarks of this Saros series. The individual will have intuitive leaps, insight, good ideas, visions, or vivid dreams. This newfound inspiration will pull the person away from his or her social life or relationship thereby causing strain in the private life. This is a time when the person needs to be free, if only for a few weeks. So it's quite a revolutionary one, which is quite interesting because this is the one on the 8th of April. And then 12 days later, we have that big Jupiter-Uranus conjunction. And you're probably already going to be feeling that energy. And not just you, everybody's going to be feeling that energy. But particularly if you have planets that are making contact with that Jupiter Uranus, which we spoke about a little bit earlier, or with um, this solar eclipse, which is 19 Aries, you may feel it more dramatically because while everybody experiences the eclipses, if they are making contact with planets in your chart, particularly if it's conjunct, opposite or square, you're more likely to feel the impact. That is um, quite interesting. I'm like, oh, that's a lot of energy. Um, yeah. And then so the next uh eclipse that we're gonna have is gonna happen the, the next two, because they happen in they happen in, in pairs or sometimes even threes. Um, and so the next the fall ones are gonna start with the lunar eclipse of September 17th, 2024. This is gonna be happening at 25 degrees Pisces, 40 minutes. And this is gonna be happening in your 10th house. The 10th house is again the house of career or what you're known for. So things might be coming into your life or out of it surrounding that. And then the next eclipse is going to be happening. It's a solar eclipse, an annual uh, happening October 2nd, 2024, at 10 degrees Libra, three minutes. And this is going to be happening in your fifth house. So that is, the you know, the fifth house is, the eclipses fall on axes. So you're going to have a lot of the Libra, Aries eclipses are happening and they're going to move into that Pisces Virgo. So that September 17th, the lunar eclipse is going to be one of the first ones that we're seeing uh, the eclipses happening in the axis of the Pisces Virgo axis. So it's definitely one to be watching out for because they are changing and they're they're doing their thing. And then the um, 
Yeah, the solar eclipse on 2nd of October will be at uh, 10 Libra in the fifth house, as Donna was saying. So that will be the last of the Libra eclipses, but we still do have um, one last Aries eclipse in March 2025. But this solar eclipse in Libra in the fifth house of children, creativity, fun, socializing, romance, it belongs to Saros series 8 South. So again, this may have a linking to things that happened in 2006, 1988, 1970, 1952. And what uh, Bernadette Brady has to say about this Saros series is separation and loss, to be parted, to finish something and to feel sad at its completion. Physical injury is also possible through overstraining one's strength. This is not the time to undertake strenuous physical activities. But lucky for you, it's in your fifth house. So it's a kind of a usually, well, actually sport is included under the fifth. So if you are involved with sport, you may want to watch injuries then, particularly if you do have planets around about 10 degrees of uh, Libra or other cardinal signs, which would be Aries, Capricorn and Cancer. Thank you very much for listening and watching. Um, we hope you have good luck with your year, Geminis. Happy New Year to you. And uh, please like, subscribe, and share if this is, uh, if you know a Gemini, share it with them, if, and particularly. <laughs> and um, yeah, please, please share. And we yeah. very much appreciate your, your sharing your time with us. Yes. And uh, if you've enjoyed this, please do uh, subscribe because every two weeks we do either a full moon or a new moon uh, podcast. We go through horoscopes for all of the signs for that particular full moon or new moon. And we look at the aspects coming up. So, you know, it's a more in-depth look as we go along. This is a general overview. So thank you for listening and um, happy 2024.